Why are you investing in education? In the end, what we're looking for, a group of smart people. Start with Gav's vision on the curriculum. They should sleep a lot uh, before they come. Honestly, and... everybody looks exhausted. <laughs> Space Monkeys blasting off with Pauline Cohen Vorms. She's the co founder and CEO of the Polkadot Blockchain Academy. We're actually here on graduation weekend getting to discuss the cohort that just went through and the future of the program. Pauline? Welcome to the show. Thank you for Thanks. being here. Thanks a lot, Jay. I'm very excited to be here. So tell us how this cohort at the Hong Kong Polkadot Blockchain Academy went and how it was different than the the waves that had gone previously. Sure. So this is actually the fourth wave already of the Polkadot Blockchain Academy, but first one in Asia. Uh, and first one in Hong Kong. Uh, this time around, we partnered with a local university, one of the best one in blockchain with Polytech University, PolyU. And uh, we welcomed 90 students, which for us is a lot. Wow. We really increased our cohort size. Um, for the first time, we had 90 students, uh, about 50 developers and about 40 builders and founders. Again, first time in Asia, so we had to uh, think about what makes the ecosystem here so different. How mm. can we uh, emphasize the local players also and prepare for more regional collaboration and mm. bring more of the um, Polkadot Asia community into the program, which was really exciting. But also, first time that we have such a big founders and builders cohort. Sure. So it really pushed us to think, um, besides the technical education uh, that we've already um, explored and try every time to improve, but still that we've already ironed out much more than for the devs, uh, to think about what does an early founder on Polkadot need? Yeah. Who do they need to know? Uh, what do they need to know technically, but also entrepreneurship wise? Um, what is what are the opportunities in Polkadot? What does it mean to raise a traditional seed or launch your token and things like this? So it's been really pushing our curriculum team uh, and the team in general operationally as well to welcome such a big cohort and also such a big builders cohort. You know, yesterday we released to our audience, we saw all the founders, they gave a 10 second pitch of their projects. A lot of diversity in the ideas there. The students themselves also, not all from Hong Kong or even from Asia, still from all over the world there. How do you find, how do you reach out to these students who are looking for this sort of opportunity? And how do they end up here at the PBA? I love this question. Um, it's a hard one, actually. It uh, takes us a lot of time. There are really months of preparation and student selection. Uh, before each cohort, we do a lot of targeted outreach with university partner and academic partners. Because ooh, yeah. in the end, what we're looking for are, um, it's, a group of smart people, mm. people who really have that love of learning and that ability to learn fast. Yeah. And that will take the education here to afterwards build their project and build or join the venture and, and, and build their project. We found that universities, academic program like postdoc, researcher, master students are usually a very good hotbed for smart people. Sure. Uh, they're not always thinking about their careers in like, I'm going to launch a venture or in business. Then they come really here for the knowledge. Mm. Uh, but it's a very good pool of talent for us. Uh, we're also looking um, and we're also using the different players in the ecosystem, uh, be it the parachains, the other founders, the projects to give us referrals, sometimes to send even some of their new hire and teammates to come get their education, yeah. um, as well as VCs or um, usual pocket dot stakeholders, also a very good place for, for referral. 40% of from Asia, uh, but only 15% um, are local Hong Kong, mainland China. So there's yeah. room for improvement here. Sure. Um, and the rest are international, really just ready to travel 30 plus hours to come get their education in person here. I was kind of lucky enough to come here at the very end of the program. This is a five week program, but by this time, not just the students, but you've also collected an incredible lineup of teachers and VCs and speakers. We're blessed. 
mm. of uh, the support we're getting from the community, um, and especially the support we're getting from the community to come and act as faculty, faculty or mentors or guest lecturers to our students. Uh, we have some of the core engineers that have built Polkadot, yeah. um, actually. Gav himself is uh, uh, giving a lecture and leading the module on XEM. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also had uh, some of the, the, the builders of the, um, and the, that have originally built Polkadot and are continuing to build Polkadot from Parity Technologies and the independent contributors. A lot of fellows from the technical fellowship, be it Sean Tabrizi, uh, Kian Paimani, um, Keys, uh, Gabe from Invarge, um, and, and so many others. We also have big players from the ecosystem coming and the founders of uh, projects. Uh, we have Nodal, we had Invarge, um, we've had Unique. John? <laughs> of course, and John from Mythical that yeah. gave an amazing guest lecture uh, yesterday it was really at the level of those gaming conference and launching moments. Yeah, they erupted, uh, the, the students they erupted, erupted into applause. In applause. Yes, I mean, yes. it amazing. was such a crazy moment. This lecture <laughs> on how to build games on Polkadot and, and Mythos was really special. Uh, students have been blessed and they, they know it. Yeah. They've met some of the most powerful builders of the ecosystem and it's right. really inspirational for them. Okay, so what's next? I mean, you're going to wrap this up. I'm sure you're already busy planning the next wave and where's that going to be in singapore what's that program look like and how is it how is it going to be different than this one yes so singapore will be our second wave in asia and fifth total uh, from mid-may to mid-june yeah. we're partnering with nus university national university singapore which is the top university in terms of blockchain years after years in ranking. Mm. Um, we're excited about it because Singapore is a very vibrant community of builder and also, of course, of investors and VCs around yeah. um, in blockchain. Um, also another hotbed for Polkadot and a lot of excitement around Polkadot specifically, which mm. we hope can help our uh, students as well as projects. All those projects are coming around for the community and, and use the PBA to find their local entry to the Asian market and to the Singaporean uh, ecosystem. Um, what's going to be different for Singapore is we're, gonna, we're looking at a, another set of talent this time around. We're looking at people who are, um, we're looking at devs, obviously. We're looking at um, uh, builders and creators, but maybe with a focus more on those who don't have a project yet. Okay. So earlier stage even than what we have now. Um, you've met with our founders, a lot of them are already working on the project. Some even have funding already. Some have users. Yeah, heard, uh, some yeah. are ready to launch. Mm -hmm. um, this time around for Singapore, we're going to go a step before and take the very smart mind that are technically minded um, and that are considering uh, blockchain on the next path and give them that first layer of education around what is blockchain, what is Polkadot, why obviously they should choose Polkadot. Uh, we hope it's an obvious choice. Um, and, uh, and give them their first path for education, but even if they don't have a project. So selecting the great mind and yeah. leave it and trusting others in the community to help them guide and build their projects. So going early, very early in the journey of a founder. And the second thing that is going to uh, be a, a change and new for us in, in Singapore, we're going to start playing with hybrid learning. So having a part of the cohort in person, in the classroom, interacting directly with the faculty, but also opening up with the accessibility plan and having some of our students or more of the cohort joining us remotely, synchronously, but online. Okay, still for the whole five weeks, but all online? Yes. That's the idea. Okay, yes. wow. The, the big vision is that at some point we'll be able to present the community with an in-person program yeah. for those who can afford to come in person and yeah. th that want these depths of learning and those conversations. Those connections. And also an online program for those who need more flexibility or cannot afford the travel. Yeah, wow, good stuff. And okay, so when is the deadline for applying for Singapore? Candidates have to apply ASAP. We're yeah. closing the, the applications. We've closed international applications and are giving another little push and a small window of opportunity for applicants um, with a closing date in the next two weeks uh, for okay. regional and local applicants from Singapore and around. Okay. So those are the last days to submit your, your application. Okay, and you shared a little bit, but what can uh, a selected applicant expect in as far as what they have to prepare before they come? They should sleep a lot uh, before they come. Honestly, and everybody <laughs> looks exhausted. It's very intense, right? They are all exhausted. Uh, we're pushing 
we're pushing everyone. They need to expect that they will learn six days a week, at least. Yeah. Um, have assignments on the weekends, have uh, days of lectures sometime and days of work of like 16 to 20 hours of work. Uh, they should also expect an incredible level of uh, friendship and camaraderie uh, among the students. They need to be ready to ask questions. A lot of the learning comes by actually interacting with the teaching assistant and others not to stay in their corner. And of course, polish their Rust knowledge. Okay. You can't be rusty on Rust before you get here, Exactly. Right? Okay. Good stuff. So PBA has recently gone through a big change. You were under the parity umbrella, but one of the very successful decentralized aspects of parity, you've ended up going through the treasury met a lot of support and a lot of success. Can you tell us a little bit about that journey? Thanks for the kind word. Um, yes, we started uh, the PBA um, as incubated by Parity. Right. And we, we were we're still very grateful and we were really lucky to be incubated by Parity and to have access to all those resources. Yeah. Uh, of course, we can still see it a lot of our faculty, our core engineers that are or were at Parity and have been building Polkadot. Uh, we've had also a lot of support from Parity leadership and exec team uh, to make this a central project in the Polkadot ecosystem. So it was a very good place to start. Um, over the last uh, six months, we've been working on our decentralization. So spinning out of parity and becoming an independent entity yeah. with all the joy and the pain of becoming a separate entity, sure. um, especially off chain on chain as well. On chain, it's been great. We've had a lot of support from the community. Mm -hmm. uh, our treasury proposal have been met with very constructive questions and feedback, but a lot of support altogether yeah. over the 90% uh, uh, passing rate. Nice. Um, it was humbling um, to, to get this level of love actually from the community and also to confirm from students or even candidates that could not join that they support the project and hope that one day they can come. Yeah. And the ecosystem also thanking us for bringing a new pipeline of talent uh, that they hire or that they uh, use to build. Um, it's been humbling actually, a really beautiful journey. Yeah, you know, I even see uh, in these cohorts people who are actively on teams in the ecosystem, they're sent here to get to become even better builders, right? Exactly. Yeah. So our learner profiles are both people who are already in the ecosystem or people that want to join the ecosystem mm -hmm. and use the PBA as their first step in. Um, but it's true, we're working more and more with existing projects and growing projects, sometimes via chains. We're sending their new hire to get their onboarding into blockchain and Polkadot or to send their existing teams to upskill or... Uh, get uh, in touch with an updated version of uh, what a Polkadot curriculum should be. Yeah. Pauline, what prepared you for what you're doing today? A CEO of the decentralized Polkadot Blockchain Academy. But where'd you come from? What were you doing before? Um, I come from education, actually. Hmm. Uh, I've been working for the last close to 15 years now on uh, in-person and online education in different companies. Um, be it a network of schools and bootcamp for CS uh, developers or uh, online platform like Coursera. What I love is thinking about student experience, learning experience, how to launch and grow uh, an education program, launching new educational product. Yeah. So it was a, a very good preparation for, uh, for the PBA. How did you end up finding this particular role? I got really lucky they found me. It found you, okay. <laughs> And what was that like? I mean, had you heard about blockchain or anything like this before? Was it on your radar? Um, I had heard about it. Yeah. I can't say I was an expert or um, educated myself. So it's been also a personal journey of growth and education. Sure. So I, I was contacted by a recruiting team to join Parity in the uh, early 2022. And I joined early 22. And what really got me was the vision um, that Gav, Jimmy, Parity people had about it's important to invest in education. Hmm. And not to say that it's not important to invest in marketing or events, uh, but which were the common investments uh, for all the other blockchains. Again, yeah. this was when the market was still with a lot of money for all of this. Sure, sure. Um, and all the other blockchains were really investing on like, let's get devs to join our blockchain by giving them swag and funky events and, ah. and something crazy and a lot of uh, parties and drugs and so on. And that was my first questions actually when interacting with those uh, people was, why are you investing in education? It's a longer return. It's a, the ROI is much longer and it's much easier to just throw some money in, in, in those parties. And that's been a proven way to acquire developers. And the answer was like, no, 
we don't want to fight for that existing pool of developers. I see. And we want to bring the smart people that are genuinely interested and want to learn and grow. Yeah. And that's, you do it through education. That's what got me in. I, we shared the same values. And then how long was it until the first uh, event in Cambridge? <laughs> like, was it two weeks or four weeks or longer? <laughs> Three months. Three months. <laughs> And then building a program like this from bare bones, like, what's your first step? What do you start with? Start with Gav's vision on the curriculum. Okay, so you're and working certain, with Gav to figure yes, out the curriculum. Okay. That was the initial curriculum vision, and still up to today, uh, Gav is giving his vision on how is Polkadot evolving and where should we uh, put the focus on. And then it's building with the, all the other contributors to make it to make it happen in the classroom. Okay, so curriculum with Gav, and then we have to find the teachers who can, because Gav can't be there the whole time. And, and then we're building the operation. Right. The teaching assistance, the student support, uh, planning the student experience, the facilities, booking the facilities, recruiting the student, the admission process, the marketing. Had you had any experience with all of that? Yes. Okay, all right. I love launching programs and you education do? Okay. products. Okay, wow, good stuff. And how do you personally how do you determine that what you're doing is successful? How do you determine that what you're doing is making an impact? So there are different ways to think of impact and success. There is obviously the impact that we bring on Polkadot and the ecosystem. How many talents do we bring? What are they doing? What are they building? Yeah. Uh, how is the uh, ecosystem really benefiting? How many new founders projects have grown? How many uh, developers were hired by teams? Uh, what was their contribution? And can we measure actually the impact of their contribution on our projects. But what touches me actually the most is when we think about e impacts on a personal level, how did the PBA impacted the students? Was there a before and an after? Mm. Did it um, help them land their first job? Mm. Did it get them a promotion? Mm. Um, did they get the knowledge that is just confirming their career path that they want to be in blockchain? Um, did they realize actually that they wanted to do research in blockchain? Uh, did they become a developers or founders? Did they get that connection, that meeting, that drink that get, got them their investment? Or did they just discover the new passion? For me, that's the personal impact assessment is the, is the most, um, I'm using that word a lot, but the most humbling when I hear those personal stories. Beautiful stuff. Now, is there anything um, you want to change about the academy going forward? I mean, you've, you've spoken about this hybrid model, so that's one thing. Anything else you've learned about what the academy is based on just having done it four times now? I'm really excited about the academy going back to its roots, even if it's been only a year and a half, but okay. we're, going back, <laughs> we're going back to the, the roots of, let's find the early, early talent, those mm. great Web2 developers that are just curious about blockchain and bring them in, those curious founders and creators and just very smart people and see, trust that if we give them the best possible blockchain and Polkadot education, they're going to do something great. So I'm really excited about going back to our roots of being just a very strong educational program. And I've heard something like when the Polkadot Blockchain Academy ends, there's this other journey of being an alumni. Um, can you talk about the growth of the alumni program? Sure. Yeah. Um, this is new actually for us now that we have over 250 alumni. Crazy. Um, we've seen the communities actually so they are self-managing, but we're also supporting it. Obviously, uh, we have a lot of players who want to do their own projects, um, but the community has become really a vibrant place of people hiring each other, supporting themselves, continuing to support themselves in their technical learning, asking questions, helping out, meeting during the Polkadot events, um, referring new candidates in. So we're really seeing a a community around the PBA, uh, between the students, the graduates, uh, the alumni, the faculty that want to stay involved. Yeah. Um, it's becoming a beautiful place of, uh, of friendship and also help. It's, uh, we're building our own mini PBA ecosystem there. It's incredible. This is, uh, you've done four, this is the third one I've been able to attend and get to experience the spirit and the enthusiasm of, of the students. And I think it really all does come down to the leadership, the people who are designing the course and making it all happen. So really lucky that you got a chance to sit down with us today. I know it's a super busy day. <laughs> so for you to take a few minutes and spend that time with us, we're really grateful. Thank and, you so um, much. Thank you for all the work you're doing. Thank you. And I couldn't do it without our faculty and the support of the community, of course. But really appreciate it talking to you today. Beautiful. Good luck in Singapore. Thanks a lot.